back to the Climber Dad channel. Today I wanted to show you guys how to texture a volume or how I texture a volume and I'm actually going to use a couple of different techniques that I haven't used before. So I've got my paint roller, I've got my paint bucket, a brush, some tape to throw in some different dimensions on the volume and there's a couple other things that I don't have that I need to borrow from the kitchen. So Okay, so now that I have my own screen and the sand, we can get crack a lacking on this thing. But let's talk about this tape. So, I actually, I normally like to use a concrete mason masking tape, but I don't have it right now. So we're gonna just use this blue tape. And I want to create a different dimension than what's on here. So I'm going to go over, the majority of it is going to be dark, but I want to have a little bit of color. So I'm going to start a line going right here. I'm going to come up. Now, here's the trick. You want to look down this line and we're actually going to tear that right here because we have to start a new tape because we want the eye to think that that line is continued over that corner. The tape just isn't gonna run that same way. So I'm standing back, I'm looking, I'm eyeballing down it so I get this straight line as it comes down here. Boom, right there. Now, I'm gonna come in here. I'll show you how to make this a point, a fine point in a minute. Just bear with me here. So again, we're gonna make sure that that comes over and we make the tape do what we want it to do and not what the corner wants it to do. Now right here, I know that because that we're coming over this angle nice and sharp that it's just gonna be easier to tear that tape and start again. Match up those edges right on the corner and then come down where you need that line to go so it continues on and looks straight. One continuous line, giving it that fourth dimension. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right, now, you can get a straight edge. You can use anything that you want. I have this square here nice and handy, so I'm gonna put that on my tape line. I normally have a different straight edge. Works way better. So I'm gonna hold that metal nice and firm on here and then rip it. That didn't rip very nice. There we go. That's better. And then it should they're fairly straight. Scoop up some sand. I've never done this before. This is new. So, oh yeah, look at that. This is quite satisfying. Is I will coat it in sand, and then I'm going to go over it with another coat, and that's going to lock those grains in there, and hopefully, I'll have a nice. 
the finish. Oh, that looks so cool. That was that was awesome. Now, I almost don't want to try it the other way, but um, I've got it done, so I might as well. I made this block, and how it's supposed to work is you have sand that goes right in this guy right here, and then air hose in the back, and then it blows out the front. Okay, so here is the side that I used this screen shaker. And that texture, I think, is gorgeous. And then we come over here to the blower. Man, that texture is also gorgeous. Doesn't look like there was a lot right in this area, but that's not due to there not being any there. It's just because the paint was extra thick right there, so. I think both sides worked extremely well. The blower seemed like it worked more better on vertical surfaces and the shaker worked better with horizontal surfaces. So uh, I'm really pleased with both of them. I think they're gonna be great. So let's get that second coat of paint on here and keep on going. By painting over the sand that you just laid down, it helps lock in those grains so it doesn't slough off into your hands. It also doesn't really affect the texture that much and it really gives it a professional look. Cool. All right, so this is working out really well. I like both of these techniques. It is phenomenal. I think that the blower actually is a little bit more smooth and will definitely be easier to get it on vertical surfaces. Whereas the shaker is really just basic. It does a fantastic job and it's easier to get it on horizontal surfaces. So now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna let this paint dry. We're gonna go ahead and do that same process, but smaller so we can get some different colors in this. And then once that paint has been cured, we'll come over with a clear coat. And what I will be using on this guy is this right here. This is Betco Matte finish this is for flooring so it's a clear coat that goes on the flooring and if it can take the abuse of going on flooring it can take the abuse of going on to these volumes i've heard that it cleans up really well and we're gonna throw this down on there it is pretty hard to find so i will include a link down in the description below whether that be on amazon or somewhere else where you can find this stuff because it does work pretty well and it has some really good coverage. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment down below if there's other ways that you like to finish these and we'll share that with the community here. If you're new, please hit the subscribe button and if this video helped you in any way, hit that like button. That gives me encouragement to keep on going and it also helps others find this video. So. I'll see you next time right here on Climber Dad.